In May 2017, the city of Marawi in the south of the Philippines was plunged into conflict as IS-affiliated militants seized control over the city. What followed was some of the heaviest urban fighting the Philippines had experienced since the end of the Second World War, as the Philippine army, supported by the Air Force, Navy and police, launched an operation to retake the city from the Islamic State. In conjunction with the ground offensive, the Philippine High Command were working tirelessly behind the front lines to locate two individuals who had orchestrated its takeover. The first was Isnalon Hapalon, who in 2016 was appointed as the leader of all IS-affiliated groups in Southeast Asia, whilst the other was Omar Maute, who headed the Maute Group, which from 2015 became a branch of the Islamic State and whose fighters had led the seizure of Marawi. Both were known to have been operating in the city, but despite countless reports and rumours as to their whereabouts, it wouldn't be until the 7th of October 2017 that the biggest development occurred. On that day, a young woman who has been personally held hostage by Hapalon and Amar seized an opportunity to escape and made contact with Filipino soldiers, with whom she shared the location of the building the terror leaders were using as a safe house. The target building in question, located in the Padian district of Marawi, had in fact been under Philippine surveillance for some time, but insufficient intelligence on who exactly was inside prevented the launching of a military operation. Using the information the former hostage provided, the Philippine military over the next week drew up plans for an assault against the building, with the objective of not only killing or capturing Isdalon Hapalon and Omar Maute, but also safely securing a large number of hostages she had pointed out to be on the target. For the operation, a substantial amount of resources from the Philippine Special Operations Command were to be committed, with an assault team earmarked with storming and clearing the building itself, being made up of an unknown number of operators from an undisclosed company of the Light Reaction Regiment, whilst two teams from the 8th Scout Rangers Company of the 1st Scout Rangers Regiment were tasked with sealing off possible exit routes at the rear of the target. The Scout Rangers were to be reinforced with several sniper teams from the 4th Light Reaction Company of the Light Reaction Regiment, in addition to two M113A2 armoured personnel carriers from the Philippine Army, which have been specially upgraded with built-in remote-controlled weapon stations. By the 15th of October 2017, the operational plans had been finalised, and the Philippine Command gave the assault force the green light to execute the mission. At 0130 on the morning of the 16th of October 2017, under the cover of darkness and in heavy rain, the assault team from the Light Reaction Regiment and equipped with night vision goggles made their way on foot to the front entrance of the target building. Simultaneously at the rear, the two teams from the 8th Scout Rangers Company, supplemented by the two M113A2 armoured personnel carriers, moved up and secured two exits from the premises, whilst the sniper teams from the 4th Light Reaction Company took up their positions in nearby buildings that overlooked the back entrance. Getting into position, the assault team made a forced entry into the building and were immediately met with small arms fire from IS militants located inside. As the gunfire broke out, both Haplon and Amar picked up their rifles and rushed to the rear exit, where they hoped to relocate to another building. Believing the back road to be safe, the two militants ran out from the target. However, parked just 30 meters away, was one of the M113A2s, whose gunner, nicknamed Black Hornet, spotted Omar and Hapalon making their escape for his thermal sights. Although at the time the Filipino troops were not aware of their identities, believed them to be just regular IS fighters. Adjusting the aim of the onboard remote controlled weapon station, the gunner fired several .50 cal rounds at the two militants, hitting Omar in the head, killing him instantly. At the same time, the supporting scout rangers and overhead sniper teams opened fire on Hapalon, striking him three times in the chest. Falling to the ground, Hapalon recovered his R4A3 rifle and briefly returned fire at the Filipino troops, before he eventually died of his wounds. Minutes later, a group of 17 hostages, including 9 women, 7 children and a 2-month-old baby, emerged from the rear of the target and rushed over to the scout rangers, where they were checked over for any explosive devices before being moved away to safety. Meanwhile, at the front of the building, the assault team had gained a foothold inside and began clearing each room and floor level, during which they engaged and killed a further eight militants affiliated to the Islamic State, whilst incurring no casualties themselves. By 0630 on the 16th, the area was declared clear of enemy troops, with all the hostages safely recovered, 
enabling several scout rangers to move forward in an armoured vehicle and recover the bodies of Amar and Hapalon located in the middle of the road. One ranger involved in the operation later stated, We had no idea that the two men sprawled face first on the dirt road were the high valley targets. Only when we turned one over did we recognise Hapalon. Moving the two bodies into their vehicle, the scout rangers were able to make a visual confirmation that the two leading terrorists in the Philippines had been neutralised, although DNA samples were to be sent to the US for official confirmation, the results of which came back on the 21st of October and confirmed that they were indeed Isnalon Hapalon and Omar Malte. The day after the operation on the 17th of October 2017, the Philippine president declared the liberation of Marawi from the Islamic State. Ladies and gentlemen, I hereby declare Marawi City liberated from the terrorist influence that marks the beginning of the application. A week later, on the 23rd of October, the Philippine military announced the end of their combat operations in the region, as Filipino troops secured the last enemy pocket in the city. The cessation of hostilities in Marawi brought an end to five months of heavy fighting, that left 80% of the city in ruins, and sadly claimed the lives of 87 innocent civilians and 168 Filipino service personnel. <laughs>